This is Piney Pepper Bill. Today is Sunday, May 9th, uh, 2021, Mother's Day. And today I wanted to bring a couple things to your attention. One of them was, one thing is the East Coast gas shortage coming, uh, prices going up. I'm not sure what's really happening. I saw gas went up a little bit around here. I'm not sure if they're going to open up because of a cyber attack. I haven't really noticed prices going up a lot yet. Another developing story tonight. One of the nation's biggest fuel pipelines forced to shut down after a cyber attack. The pipeline supplying 45 percent of the East Coast fuel products, including gasoline, diesel and home heating oil, spanning 5,500 miles. The president briefed this morning, the White House saying it's working to avoid disruption to supply and restore pipeline operations as quickly as possible. But questions remain about the potential impact on consumers and prices at the pump. I'm expecting if they don't do something with the, the pipeline in the next couple days, I'm expecting to see a couple of gas stations shut down for a day or two, maybe not getting their supply in. But the, one of the main things I want to talk about was, as we know, Event 201 played out, which still might be playing out. It came out right before the pandemic. A couple months before, Bill Gates had something to do with that. And, of course, it was a scenario in case of a pandemic around the world. And it just happens to, you know, a couple months later, we have a pandemic that sweeps the world. And this came out. Uh, U.S. officials obtained papers written by military scientists and Chinese health officials. In 2015, this booklet was made, scenarios as far as the Chinese to weaponize a coronavirus. And this is five years before this happened. And, according to what we're told, Wuhan, China, is where this coronavirus started. But they're talking about World War Three. They predict... World War III, and it could be a biological war or fought, fought with biological weapons. First tonight, new details from a document produced by Chinese military scientists where they discuss weaponizing SARS coronaviruses five years before the pandemic hit. The book was written by People's Liberation Army scientists and senior Chinese public health officials back in 2015. It describes SARS coronaviruses as heralding, and I quote, a new era of genetic weapons. It says they can be artificially manipulated into an emerging human disease virus, weaponized and unleashed in a way never seen before. One of the authors of this book is the former deputy director of China's Bureau of Epidemic Prevention, Li Feng, and the editor-in-chief of the paper, Zhu Dezhong, was the leader of the SARS Epidemic Analysis Expert Group under the Chinese Ministry of Health. He reported to the top leadership of the Chinese Military Commission and the Health Ministry during the 2003 SARS crisis. He briefed them 24 times. He also prepared three reports for the General Office of the Communist Party's Central Committee and the General Office of the State Council. He gave two big interviews on Chinese state TV and appeared in six news articles. He was responsible for 16 national and military command topics. Now, just to be clear, before I go on and bring you new information from this document, while intelligence agencies suspect, and they've been investigating this since early last year, that COVID-19 may be the result of an accidental leak from a Wuhan lab, there's no suggestion it was an intentional release. The significance of this paper is that, is that it offers a rare insight into how senior scientists at one of the PLA's most prominent military universities where high levels of defence research are conducted were thinking about biological research. This Chinese language paper is called The Unnatural Origin of SARS and New Species of Man-Made Viruses as Genetic Weapons. That's its title. And it says, Following developments in other scientific fields, there have been major advances in the delivery of biological agents, 
For example, the newfound ability to freeze dry microorganisms has made it possible to store biological agents and aerosolize them during attacks. In this document, unbelievably, there's a whole section on the best conditions under which to release a biological attack. It says this, bioweapon attacks are best conducted during dawn, dusk, night or cloudy weather because intense sunlight can damage the pathogens. It says biological agents should be released during dry weather, rain or snow can cause the aerosol particles to precipitate. And it says a stable wind direction is desirable so it can float into the target area. The book notes as well how a sudden surge of patients requiring hospitalization during a bioweapon attack, and this is a quote, could cause the enemy's medical system to collapse. It then goes on to talk about the potential need for isolation and quarantine. Here's more from it. Large, large scale biological weapon attacks can cause many indirect consequences in addition to human casualties, major impacts include enormous burden on healthcare system. Well, we've seen that. Biological weapon attacks have a much prolonged effect than conventional attacks like explosion. It may also carry highly contagious diseases that can be transmitted through various means. The document also talks about the psychological terror that bioweapons can cause. It's chilling. It says, Biological weapons will not only cause widespread morbidity and mass casualties, but also include formidable psychological pressure that could affect combat effectiveness. Just like other disasters, people will live under fear of attack for a considerable period of time, causing brief or lasting psychological impairment among some. In other words, it goes on, attacks using biological weapons can cause acute and chronic psychological and mental illnesses such as acute stress reactions. Now, among the most bizarre claim in this document is the theory by the authors, and there were 18 authors, most of them linked to this high-risk military university. They claim, and it's, it's a conspiracy theory, that the first SARS from 2003 was a man-made bioweapon deliberately unleashed on China by terrorists. Of course, scientific consensus holds that SARS was of natural origin and that it crossed the xenographic barrier from palm civets to humans, likely through the sale of wild animals in wet markets. So this is a very odd conspiracy theory for a senior Chinese military scientist to be pushing about the SARS pandemic of 2003. And it's very similar to China now claiming that the COVID-19 pandemic was brought into Wuhan in frozen food or by the American military. These are conspiracy theories that the World Health Organization irresponsibly gave credence to in its recent whitewash of an investigation. But this isn't just a random conspiracy theory from a senior military scientist. This shows what senior scientists are teaching the next generation of military scientists coming through, as well as reporting to the Chinese Ministry for Health Zhu Denzhong also held the position of professor and doctoral supervisor at the Air Force Medical University's Military Epidemiology Department. Here, he trained more than 100 PhD and other students. Putting this idea into young scientists' minds that SARS from 2003 was a bioweapon inflicted on them by foreign terrorists. One of his students actually went on to write, to write a thesis about this very topic of SARS being of unnatural origin. And that thesis was uncovered, I found out today, by a group of internet researchers, investigators who go by the name of Drastic. I mean, this is a war mentality, teaching Chinese students the best conditions under which to release a bioweapon. This is very dangerous stuff. Yet this editor-in-chief of this paper was successively rated as an outstanding teacher in the army. He was given the gold medal of the Military Academy Education Award. He was recognized as an advanced individual in the national SARS prevention and control work, ranked as an outstanding party member of the general staff, and he still enjoys special government allowances. New Zealand data scientist Gilles Demenouf, he is one of the people at Drastic who've been researching this individual. He told me today 
You would think that Zhu Dejong may be some fringe scientist based on his conspiracy theories about SARS-1. Well, he is not. Instead, he is a renowned epidemiology professor at the 4th Military Medical University. He's considered an outstanding party member within the PLA top levels and enjoys a special government allowance, just like an academician. His training was really good for sure. This is what Gilles says. In 1981, he went to do some postdoc study in the US at the very top Baylor College of Medicine and in the US CDC. These days, he's busy teaching his very special theories to doctoral and postdoc students, at least 53 and up to 100 so far, who form the latest generation of PLA scientists. It's just extraordinary that this is what they're being taught at university, how to unleash a bioweapon attack as recently as 2015. This 263 page paper was published by the Chinese military medical science press. That's a, a Chinese government owned publishing house managed by the general logistics department of the PLA. I've confirmed while investigating this story that senior state department sources obtained this paper and analyzed it during their investigation into the origins of the coronavirus back in May, 2020. Former Secretary of State Mike Pompeo and his chief China advisor, Miles Yu, then made a passing reference to it in that brilliant Wall Street Journal op-ed that they wrote back in February. They said a 2015 PLA study treated the 2003 SARS coronavirus outbreak as a contemporary genetic weapon launched by foreign forces. I tracked the paper after this. It circulated among Chinese dissident communities online. It came across the desk of Luke de Pulford. He's the coordinator at the Inter-Parliamentary Alliance on China, the, gro the global group set up last year to raise awareness about China's human rights abuses. He said to me that, that if this document is representative of the scientific thinking of those who advise the top leadership of the Chinese Communist Party, then there are very serious questions which need urgent answers. So they talk about World War III, they talk about how to deploy it, the times of day, early morning, late afternoon, but they talk about not doing it during the daytime with the sun because the sun evidently can break down the components or whatever of the virus. It just seems strange to me that at the same time, this is 2015, and uh, in 2017, the U.S. government uh, plans to spray chemtrails into the sky uh, to block the sun. And here we go, Bill Gates to spray chalk in 2021. Bill Gates has bought all the farmland. Bill Gates is giving out the vi uh, the vaccine. But he wants to block the sun for because of geoengineering because of the cow farts and all that. But this biological weapon that they're talking about with the coronavirus, they can't do it with the bright sunlight because the sunlight breaks it down. It just seems awful strange to me. So, what do you think of that? They talked about how to deploy it, World War III. Everything's just playing out a little too easy as far as these books and scenarios and Event 201, you had the uh, Rockefeller Foundation thing that I did a thing on the other day, and now this Chinese thing. Are we playing into their game? Is this whole thing really happening? Is it real, or is this a scenario that we're partaking in? Uh, let me know your thoughts, and have you noticed uh, these the gas shortages? As of today, I believe what I read, the pipeline is down for the gas, which is like, what, 5,000 miles or something like that. It's a pretty good percentage of our gas. Supposedly, I think, unless it changed, there were cargo ships out uh, in Los Angeles because of Suez Canal before. They are all backed up and they are out in the ocean anchored off there and they suppose you had millions of gallons of gasoline waiting to be here. Texas was shut down. Their, their gas line was shut down because of that freeze they had a couple months ago. 
how is this playing out? Summer's here, or just about here, opening things up, but are we going to be able to go anywhere? Is gas going to be six, seven dollars an hour? Or certain places are we not going to have gasoline? There's a truck driver shortage. They can't find truck drivers to deliver the gas. Now another thing here, we have mixed canoe rental down the street. They're opening up. They have the little teeny micro school buses with a trailer with the canoes on them. They have kids after school, you know, uh, for summertime driving these little buses. They're little. It's, you know, it's like a pickup truck pulling a little trailer. You don't need a CDL. They have retired guys, retired school bus drivers that would do it. I worked there for a while. Now, I was there the other day getting firewood. The guy that works there lives across the street. He said they're having a problem now. The state of New Jersey, I don't know if it's the state of New Jersey or federal government. I don't know. I think it's the state of New Jersey. Is require requiring him, all his drivers must have a CDL and a background check. It costs money. Motor vehicles isn't really open up. There's long lines. To take a CDL license, you need to have a truck and all this stuff. These young kids aren't going to pay that. And a background check takes time. You can't just get one. I mean, my wife tried getting a background check and all for stuff, and it took a long time. The canoe place is only open for like three months. So he's right now he had like seven or eight drivers, a couple backup drivers. But now the young kids can't get a CDL because of all this stuff. They just want to work there. You, you know, you're not getting paid a lot. You work a couple hours, throw canoes on. You take some kids and some families down the street. You drop them off. You bring them back. You pick them up down further down the road. So now the kids aren't going to drive the buses. The retired guys he used to have don't have CDLs anymore because they don't drive, they're retired, they don't keep that license up, so now they can no longer drive. He's got one person who can drive. He was going to hire a couple school bus drivers for this from the summer that are laid off, but because of their unemployment, they're getting more money in stimulus and all, to them it's not worth driving, it's not worth their time, they'd rather stay home. So. I don't know how that's going to work out. And now gas is going to be doubling up. And he's got those buses. This gas, not just is gas going to go up. Everything's going to go up again because of the gas supply. If gas goes up, Amazon delivery is going to go up. UPS is going to go up. Your mail is going to go up. Cigarettes, everything, coffee, everything's going to go up because of and it won't go back down. I remember a couple years ago at work, the soda machine and candy machine at work, when the gas went up, she raised the prices 25, 35, 45 cents. This sign said, because of the gas prices, I have to raise this. But then, like the next year, next summer, when the gas went back down, I'm like, are you going to lower the price? Well, why would I lower the price? Because gas went down, you raise this because of gas. It never goes down. Nothing goes back down again. So, prepare for gas shortages or sparse areas. Are cities going to get it or aren't cities going to get it? I mean, I know Amazon and the police stations, EMS, fire departments. I mean, they'll probably get it first, you know, if, if this continues more than a couple more days my opinion but what are your thoughts have you noticed gas prices going up since this happened uh, I mean gas has been going up anyway but because of this that happened with the cyber attack have you noticed any shortages any gas stations not having fuel or uh, just my thoughts if you've noticed anything let me know I mean gas here went up the last couple days like four or five cents one place went up like 10 cents but they're always expensive so I haven't really noticed a big increase yet I'm expecting it in the next couple days this is Pony Prepper Bill and I'll talk to you later bye bye